Welcome to this episode of YouTube where I've entitled it Correlation and Causation. And this is a concept that we deal with a lot in the scientific community. This idea that just because two events occurred at one time doesn't necessarily mean that those events caused a different uh, an outcome. Uh, so in this case, I'm featuring Luna and Grizzer. And uh, certainly we have talked a lot about their transition together and the first few months it was pretty much just coexisting where we didn't have much interaction. Most of the time Luna would food possess growl and Grizzer would give her a wide berth. But we got a bout of a little bit colder weather that came in after we had some warm weather and then uh, seasonally this seems to be the time of the year when we do see hormones kind of peak um, in the wild wolf breeding season or in captive wolf breeding season. Now these wolves are spayed and neutered and so we know that we don't have any uh, as great of an influence on reproductive hormones although we still do have pituitary adrenal gland hormones that can peak at this time of the year. But uh, the question is did the season, the cold weather or just time together cause this event of what appears to be some fairly socially engaging activity. And at first when this started we actually were watching uh, from the window we were doing getting ready for wolf care and we saw Luna just scruff biting on Grizzer and uh, we actually went out there and stopped it just to make sure that Grizzer was a willing participant. So when we stopped it uh, he showed us that he wanted to engage. He he, uh, we stopped the interaction and he came around us and he did a four leg stab and then he kind of did a little bit of a prance and then he did a play bow and um, kind of pranced over towards her so we know that he was willingly engaging and obviously this lunging um, towards her is means that he's he's certainly not you know at the will or the whim of Luna which is what our concern is because she is a five year old Grizzard's going on 13 so well, but the question is, I mean, is this, um, you know, just a just a natural progression of their relationship? Is this seasonally changed? Is this weather stimulated? Uh, there's things that we can do um, to be able to try to identify that that are related to maybe looking at cortisol, looking at, you know, hormonal things. But they require a lot of blood work and certainly not something that we're interested in. But we always want to be sure that when we're making observations and recording data, that we're thinking about the scientific method that just because this correlated with colder weather or this correlated with March, uh, this correlated with, you know, again, um, timing, how long they've been together, doesn't necessarily mean it caused this interaction. But the end result is, whatever the cause, it's nice to see these two interacting again. Uh, they are, um, especially Grizzer, you know, he's been alone really since 2011, so for him to have a, a equally balanced pack mate who can uh, put up with his size and put up with his interactions. But what was interesting, in days following, this got a lot more social. It started out with just kind of this wrestling, and then Luna comes down and does a nose-to-nose -nose with Grizzer and actually presents herself. So here's another correlation. We've got Grizzer investigating, and certainly the anal scent glands are always active, but um, is there another hormonal response going on? So this is a, a correlation. This is a two a wolf presenting herself to a male and even though she's neutered and doesn't again have the reproductive hormones that you would have from an intact female um, is there a correlation with this being hormonal and uh, certainly uh, something to look at in future opportunities when we can advance some more lab work and try to get uh, an idea again of how to measure that in a non-invasive way meaning not through blood work uh, because Blood work requires, on most times, immobilization for us, and so that's not an easy task for us to be able to get that information. So we've been looking at things like fecal cortisol or cortisol uh, stress hormone um, identifiers within the hair samples, uh, prolactin hormone uh, opportunities to identify, again, a calming version of that hormonal response in the spring. So that's just something I wanted to add, and again, we always talk about making sure when we're observing the wolves that we look at all of the factors before we make or jump to kind of a conclusion or, or draw from a conclusion. So here's another correlation um, issue. Notice Grizzler's got a back right leg. He's not weight bearing on. And I think there's a pretty strong correlation to the idea that when you're wrestling with your pack mate and you've kind of been this uh, 
little sedentary retired wolf and then you get a five-year-old living with you that you might want to, uh, might see a correlation between uh, tweaking maybe an ACL uh, knee issue and um, the activity that's been going on. So Grizzly right now is actually being treated. We, we did on Friday uh, pull him off uh, and put him back over on the east side, separated by himself to give his leg a little bit of a time to kind of maybe um, get a break from, from too much activity. So he's on an anti-inflammatory for seven days. If that doesn't work, uh, we'll be uh, doing more uh, veterinary uh, response to that. So over in the exhibit pack, again, a correlation issue. We had a little bit of an issue with Aiden uh, on uh, about a week ago, to maybe two weeks ago now. We had some really strong winds, high uh, gusting winds, 30, 40 miles an hour. And uh, Aiden's not a big fan of wind. So he comes up with a couple of back legs, both back legs, a little tender. Um, you can see down on the haunches a little bit. Uh, we don't know if uh, maybe a, a tree fell and he ran in response to that tree and slipped on the ice. But again, that windy uh, couple of days created a behavioral intimidation and created a little bit of a physical abnormality that we had to treat with anti-inflammatory. He, he, after five days, he was fine, but not sure really what the correlation was there. But again, wind is one of those factors that uh, can influence the pack. So that's kind of what's going on. We are in the midst of webinars, birthday webinars. Bolts had his webinar on the 17th. His birthday uh, webinar included a deer head, which he managed to keep for a period of time. I tried to make sure that he got it as his birthday gift, but it's not always easy if a pack of five to be able to take your possession and run with it without somebody else um, getting involved. But typically we uh, provide some kind of a stimuli for the birthday webinars. So coming up, we have Luna's birthday webinar on March 25th, and then April 27th is Denali and Aiden's webinar, obviously May 2nd, Axel and Grayson, and then we end the birthday webinars with Grizzer on May 5th. So if you're interested in participating in one of the webinars, uh, we got a link here on the screen that you may uh, uh, connect with our registration page and see all of our webinars that we have to offer for the upcoming year. So that's it. Sorry for a little bit of delay. Uh, it's been very busy here again between, um, you know, Aiden's issues, Grizzard's issues, uh, and snow and uh, uh, life on the exhibit always, always takes a priority over all my other duties. So we're happy to report pups are doing well. Axel, 92 pounds on the left there. Grayson still around that 80 pound rate of uh, dealing with a little parasite issue we're trying to solve with him. But otherwise, everybody's healthy and active. So thanks for watching. See you next week.